знаю. What is Narayan? He's here, he's here. Keshava, Keshava, Narayan, Madhava.
your love on me. Um, uh, it's very hard to cry. There are no, no tears are coming. So uh, the song is about um, needing your mercy in order to make all of this successful. And anything we do needs to be uh, full of Guru's mercy. <laughs> Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshodun Militanjana Tasmai Sindhulavi Mancha Kalpatarubhyasya Kripa Sindhubhyai Vacha Patita Nam Pamanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Nam Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayati Krishna Ayo Krishna Chaitanya Namhe Gaurat Vishri Gurave Gaura Chandra Yeradhika Yai Tadale Krishna Ayo Krishna Bhaktaya Tadabhaktaya Tavai Vasmi, Tavai Vasmi, Najiva Mitoya Abhina, Itipitaya Abhi, Tangnai First of all, my Koti-Koti Dandavat in the Lotus Feet of my spiritual master, Paramaradha, Om Vishnu Bhada Sutta Sishnu Bhakti Prakranti. And same in the Lotus Feet of my Siksha Guru, Astota Sishma Bhakti Prakranti, Bhakti Vedan Swami Dhar. Today is fourth day. And you have the mercy of Guru Gauranga very peacefully. We have passed so many days. Even so many devotees, more than ever, are assembled in India. Up till now, no complaint. <laughs> so, yesterday in class, we discussed about Uttam Adhikari, Madhyam Adhikari, and Kanishta Adhikari. Uddham Adhikari, she is everywhere. What he was sitting, in what mood, sent to Supreme Lord. <coughs> he did, he got pranam to all, thinking my Supreme Lord is everywhere. Even to blade of grosses and trees and creepers and everywhere. Very humble. And those who are Madhya Madhikari, Prem Maitri Kripa Upeksha, they have love and affection to Krishna. And Tadid and Adhineshu. Maitri, with pure devotees, like friends, like junior friends, like senior friends, like some category, three kinds. And then, to Balish Kripa, those who are ignorant, but not so much, or, no but, eh? 
arrogant or taste or nasty not nasty not mayabadi they do upek upeksha neglect them so these are madhyam adhikari always testing rasas no. so he has no nothing to do with our badhri always golok and bindavan always singing dancing playing on floors in a rush always so he does not know who is suffering or suffering uttam adhikari to like sukadev goswami he is naked quiet going to us all world always thinking in the awesome of thinking the sick past and soft things he has no idea that they are suffering or not only madhyam adhikari if uttam adhikari he will have to come in मध्यम अधिकारी एंड देन ही विल डू सो प्रेम मैत्री कृपापेक्षा फॉर मध्यम अधिकारी एंड ही कम्स अमोंग अस दैट मध्यम अधिकारी एंड ही थिंक्स दे आर सफरिंग सो वनली बाय द मर्सी ऑफ मध्यम अधिकारी वी कैन गो टुवर्ड्स कृष्ण भक्ति एंड कनिष्ठ अधिकारी वली अर्चन ऑफ कृष्णा इट डज नॉट रेस्पेक्ट तत्भक्ति डिवोटी और अदर एंड देन ही हैज ऑफ Maharaj Nemi, that how we can know he is uttam adhikari, Mahabhagavat, and he is doing. Grihitvapi indriyai arthan. Those who <coughs> taking by his senses everything in this world. But if anything happiness comes, oh, nothing to please. And if so much suffering coming, oh, not disturb by that. What kind of suffering may come? What happiness it may come, but he is not disturbed. Not too much happy. Oh. If he is so, then he is uttam bhagavat. Dehendri apran mano dhyanjo. We know that janma mitu, death and birth, bhuk pyas, hunger and thirst, sram kasta, labor, sram and kasta. that now i am very tired like this bhay fear from others he can take my money he can take my wife oh old age is coming i will die so always bhay but he is not attached by any Nothing. He can be thirsty or 
without food, so many things, no harm. Like Sukhdev Goswami. He never once, never begs anything. By the wish of Krishna, anything is coming, he will take otherwise, nothing. Only air can take, water can take, and he will be satisfied. No. So, these are Mahabhava's sick symptoms. Nakam karma vijanang jasa chetasi sampava. In their mind, in their heart, nothing comes, the desire of sense gratification never comes. No bees at all. No seed coming. Never any worldly desire comes in his heart. And always situating in Brahma, that is in Vasudeva, Krishna. Oh, he is Mahabhagavad. Those who have no attachment to this body, that I am my, this is my body, I am body. And for other relatives, their father, mother, bandhu, bandhu, and others. He has no false ego. Oh, he is certainly Mahabhagavat. If whole world's wealth comes to him and goes, he has nothing to do. He will not be affected at all. We will be affected if some money will come and go. <laughs> and always situated in Krishna Chintan. Remember the sweet pastimes of all Krishna. Vishrijat hridayam na jasya sakshat hari apaso abeto apagau ghanasa. The name of Krishna, if anyone being vipas, what? Being vipas? Helpless. Vipas means? that uh, Ajamil, when Jamdut came and not knowing and he told Narayana for his son. So if anyone here or chant this name, <coughs> so his so many kinds of Rashi Rashi who's Paparashi. <coughs> Only one name of Krishna can destroy all these things. Thus Krishna, those who have <coughs> binded in it their love and control Krishna, they are really Bhagavad Pradhana. These are symptoms. <coughs> then, Nani asked. Oh, I want to know what is Maya? And the Maya is very, very difficult. How we can conquer that Maya? And then he told. Maharaj, no, Nar no, no, Jogendra, one of them, Antariksha, he told. You should know that creation is done by Maya. What we see by these eyes, what we feel by our senses, everything is Maya. Especially, <coughs> Once, Kamdev, Cupid, wanted to defeat 
Nard Rishi, but he could not. And then come there, holding hands, pray, and return back. So something came in his heart, ego. But Krishna cannot tolerate, he will do a prayer. He will take out. So, <coughs> he went to Brahma, his father told, Oh, you have told me, don't tell to Narayan. And then his guru, Narayan, went to Shankar. Oh, hearing this, Shankar also advised, don't tell to Narayan. But he went to Vaikuntha and he told, Oh, by your mercy, I have conquered calm day. It is very difficult for Brahma or others. Krishna told that, oh, you are greatest bhakt. And then he wanted to operate. <coughs> so in the meantime, when Narada left the Bhaipun and came to world, this world, he saw a beautiful lady. Very, very beautiful. He has never seen a beautiful lady before. And his father has made swayambar. What swayambar? She will take garland and he will see who is beautiful or fit for me and then see. This is called swayambar. He saw that. Oh, the lady is very, very beautiful. I have never seen. She is like Lakshmi. And then he went to his father and told, Oh, I want to marry your daughter. Oh, I want to read upon the lines of hands, astrology. And he saw, really she is Lakshmi-like. And then he was so much attracted. And then his father told that you can come in Swayambar and if she will give garland, you know. Nay. Oh, I will do magic. Now Nara saw that I am like old. I am not so much. Uh -huh. So he went to Narayan again <laughs> and told, I have never begged you anything. Please be merciful. For one day, you should give your beautiful face home to me. <laughs> and then Narayan told, Kalyanam Bhavatu. One day. For your Welfare, I will do everything. What can I not do for him? He thought that he has been done. And he at once came to Swamba and where that lady was going to give mala, but not giving anyone. She was searching a very good quali qualified person. Not used to go to his in front, that he is not looking, otherwise how he will not be attached. So here and there, he everywhere. But she never did get Gorle. In the meantime, Vishnu himself, Narayan, came in Garud and that lady gave Gorle to that Narayan and Narayan at once he began very sad. There were two uh, the associates of Shankar. They were laughing and joking. Oh, how beautiful you are. How beautiful you are. Please see your face in water, in glass. But he never thought and he was moving here and there. But when Narayan took 
Lakshmi with him. Then he became angry. And he went to Narayan. I never begged you. Whole life I have done your mercy. And now you have neglected me. So, as I am, I was weeping for wife. Ah, no one is controller you. No one can, but I will control you. And then he saw his face in water. Oh, monkey Hanuman. <laughs> and he became more angry. So, as I am weeping and searching from my wife, you should also be very worried well for your wife and me. And then he told Abhishek to Sankar associate that you will be demon. So they became Raman Kumbhakar. Oh, and what face you have given, that face will help you. <laughs> so this Ram, oh, this is Maya. This is Maya. Even Narad liberated, but that Maya uh, made, made dance to Narad. Also, you know, Mohini. Mohini. Shankar told to Krishna, I want to see your Mohini room. Mohini form. Again and again, he requested. <coughs> and then, Krishna become Mohini room, half naked, taking flowers, <coughs> jumping like dancing. And what became Shankar? He saw Mohini and he ran after oh, Mohini. He became naked. <laughs> His Mrikachala, oh, His Damaru also, and Trishul also. And he began to run after. Parvati told him, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but he, after that, by the request of Parvati, oh, Krishna again became in Narayan. Oh, this is Maya. In this world, we are not this body. Not body. But we, but we think that we are body. Really, their relatives, son, daughter, father, mother, Bandhu, Bandhu. Not related to him. They are eternal servant of Krishna. But he thinks that they are mine. And for this he becomes Oh, so much money. Oh, this is Maya. You know, at the time of Pralaya, huh? Pralaya, whole what? earth becomes water, and water becomes fire, fire becomes air, air becomes ether, and ether goes in Brahma, and Brahma also. He goes in the Karnabhusai Vishnu. Thus, whole world is finished. Oh, this is Maya. So, Maya is very difficult to conquer. You should try to always remember and meditate. Meditate. Krishna, sweet past time, then Maya will be very far away. Only remedy is this. He Brahma, Nara, Sankar, Vishwamitra. So what do we see? There can be a touch by this Maya. What to tell us? Be always. Don't for 
इस समय नष्ट ना करो वेस्ट टाइम ह्यूमन बॉडी ह्यूमन फॉर्म इन दिस फॉर्म ओनली वी कैन हैव लव एंड अफेक्शन फॉर कृष्ण वी कैन है साधु संग अदरवाइज नॉट लव करो कृष्ण दास सुनिया श्री प्रबोध उवाच कर्मणि अरबामनम दुख हत्ये सुखाया च पश्यत पका विपार्यसम मिथुनि चरिनम लीनम सो द ट्रांसलेशन श्री प्रबोध सेड एक्सेप्टिंग द रोल्स ऑफ मेल एंड फीमेल इन ह्यूमन सोसाइटी the conditioned souls unite in sexual relationships thus they constantly make material endeavors to eliminate their unhappiness 
and unlimitedly increase their pleasure. But one should see that they inevitably achieve exactly the opposite result. In other words, their happiness inevitably vanishes, and as they grow older, their material discomfort increases. <coughs> So, this is very clear <laughs> that when we are enamored by the opposite sex and the illusion of enjoyment increases, then we uh, create so many desires. It's as if the woman and the man, they both have a dream to enjoy. And then they come together and they try through many, many years to create that dream, that conception of pleasure. But it is only a dream. It's not a reality. And when the two, the, the male or the female, understands that this is not working out to my pleasure, then there's friction very often in Western the world anyway. But in Indian society it's a little different because they understand duty in this respect. And this is very important actually. In Indian society, the divorce rate is about 2 or 3 percent. In the Western world it's about 80 or more. But they understand the aspect of duty. So even though if devotees take to this ashram and they perform their duty, as Srila Gurudev is always encouraging, then this ashram can be successful as Vaishnavas. But if we're Grihamedi, if we're trying to exploit each other for our own pleasure, then no uh, success can be achieved. All failure will actually come, ultimately. And as I'm sure many of us realize... <laughs> 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 So those who have experienced in Vihasta Ashram can speak. <laughs> One marriage, two marriage, three marriage. But um, The, the material energy is very difficult to overcome, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. It's practically impossible. Only one who has surrendered to me can easily cross beyond it. So by the mercy of Guru, Vaishnavas, and Lord Krishna, the householder may get some strength, some principles, do bhajan, and gradually progress in their ashram to renunciation. But more often than not, what we see is that because of the contact with the opposite sex, opulence, money, especially if children are there, that there's so many plans for enjoyment. And this kind of phantasmagoria or dream can continue one's whole life. Because after children are grown, then one becomes grandpa, grandma, and also grandchildren are there, and they can continue to relive the fantasy of uh, enjoyment in, in uh, household life. So those who are fortunate enough to get the association of Srila Gurudev and other Vaishnavs who come to realize something of the dangers of material life and household life, especially Griyamedi Anda Kupam, engaging in illicit sex or too much sense gratification, keeping too much money and hoarding uh, things in this world for one's own desire, but will begin to gradually give up the results of one's labor and fruit 
and serve Hari Guru Vaishnavas by giving some money, by doing some seva, by coming into the association of Vaishnavas, hearing Hari Kita, by doing Guru Seva. And this way, gradually, gradually, through household ashram, one will become purified, and the disease in the heart of lust, and lust taking all forms, not just sen sensual, uh, sexual gratification, but lust for position, fame, money, any opulence in this world will gradually diminish and one will become more and more attached to hearing and chanting and devotional activities. Then one will enter Vanaprastashram, Sanyasashram, and become completely attached to the Lord and go back home, back to Godhead. Go. Explain the same slow. I'll just read the translation again. Accepting the roles of male and female in human society, the conditioned souls unite in sexual relationships. Thus they constantly make in material endeavors to eliminate their unhappiness and unlimitedly increase their pleasure. But one should see that they inevitably achieve exactly the opposite result. In other words, their happiness inevitably vanishes, and as they grow older, their material comfort increases. Discomfort increases. Om Ajnanam Timiram Dasya Gyanam Jana Sulakaya Chaksura Nalitam Yena Tazmai Sri Gurudena Maha. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna makes two analogies that possibly explain this idea. He says in the third chapter, when Arjuna asks him, What is it, O Lord, that makes people act even without their own volition? They're forced to act against their will in this world. And Krishna replied, It is lust alone, Arjuna, which is just like fire, which burns just like fire, which is the all-devouring, sinful enemy of the world. Just as fire rages and screams out for fuel, and one may think, if I provide fuel, I'll satisfy the fire and it will diminish. But the more we try to satisfy the fire, the more the fire rages. So the more one tries to satisfy lusty desires, the more those desires increase. Our Srila Prabhupada quoted one Vaishnava poet, who lamented, I tried so hard to satisfy these senses, but they're never satisfied. Then someone may say to them, well, if they're not satisfied with your service, why don't you give up their service then? So that Vaishnava poet said, the problem is that although they're never satisfied with my service, they're not kind enough to relieve me from that service. This is chaos. Another analogy given by Sri Krishna in Bhagavad Gita is in the 15th chapter where he compares this material world to a river, an upside down banyan tree where everything is upside down being reflected in the river. The roots are up and the branches are down. Also, this tree reflected in the muddy river doesn't even look exactly like it looks in the reality. It's reflected in Muddy River, so the fruits, the flowers, the leaves are all not very beautiful, they're distorted, and it's just muddy water. If anyone tries to pick a flower or fruit or leaf from that muddy water, he'll become reflected, uh, excuse me, frustrated. And if he tries to enjoy some food that's reflected in a mirror, and he goes to that mirror and goes to that food, he'll simply hit the glass. And the more he tries harder and harder, finally he breaks the glass and there's havoc and bloodshed. So the more we try to satisfy the senses, the more they create uh, yearning and frustration and defeat. In the spiritual world, Krishna has a desire to understand the love of Srimati Radhika. 
He wants to understand his pastimes from her side, and so he becomes her in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That is, he accepts her mood. Pervertedly reflected in this world, in all loving relationships, we try to understand the mood of the beloved. What is he thinking? What is she thinking? Did that smile mean she likes me or that she has another lover? So the more we try to enter into that love, the more we try to put our mind in the sense gratification, the more and more we become bewildered. Krishna says also in the Bhagavad Gita that the mind engaged in desiring Krishna is satisfied and that mind desiring sense gratification can never be satisfied. It's not that the non-fulfillment of the desire causes misery. It's the material desire and the turning away from Krishna that's miserable. Now my hand is facing the light and it's in the light. If it turns a little bit away from the light, it's in the darkness. And we know that in the darkness of night, there's so many scary objects that we imagine. So turning away from Krishna, Maya Haya Andakar, and turning to the darkness of Maya in so-called loving affairs, then we simply are in fear and lamentation and illusion. Srila Prabhupada gives the example that if you try to see someone else in the darkness, even if they're standing right next to you, you can't see them. But when the sun comes up in the day, then you can see each other very easily and have a relationship with each other. Similarly, trying to relate to each other on the basis of the body is like seeing in the darkness. It's not seeing. But seeing through the medium of seeing Krishna in the other person's heart and Guru in the other person's heart and relating to them in that way, then we can actually see each other. In the once in a blue moon experience that I had in a van with Srila Gurudev from Badger to Oakland uh, about eight years ago, Gurudev was saying that only when we love Krishna can we actually have any affection for anyone in this material world. All affection in this material world is illusion. So I said, well, what about the affection of God brothers and God sisters? So he said, will one Atma marry another Atma? So then uh, Nanda Gopa Prabhu was driving. So I said, well, what about Pundarik Prabhu who was in the car and Nanda Gopal? They are two God brothers. What about that affection? So Gurudev said, do you know who Nanda Gopal really is? Do you know him? No. Until we know who he really is, we cannot have real affection. So if we throw our rock, we're throwing rocks in the pool. If we all throw our rocks in the same spot, then the circles go round and round, bigger and bigger, till the edge of the pool or pond. But if we throw our rocks in different parts, then those circles overlap each other, and there's conflict of the circles. Similarly, if we all put our love in Krishna, then our love expands to everyone, and when we all put our love in ourself and our objects of sense gratification, then there's always conflict of interest, and quarrel, and fear, and lamentation. <laughs> to be happy and to avoid all kinds of suffering, we have engaged our whole senses in that. Especially to remove suffering. And for this whole world sitting at a place, Sanjukta Rashtra, <coughs> United Nation, they discuss what for they are doing. They can more sufferings are coming. Old will, age will come. You will have to give up this body. So many problems. So this is not method. Also, we are always engaged in making money. That money will help us. But really not. Nityarthi de inabitti.
ओम ज्ञान मिरांडस्य ज्ञानम जनशलाकया चक्षुरुन मिलितम येन तस्माय श्री गुरुवे नमः सो द नेक्स्ट टेक्स्ट नित्यार्थि देन वित्तेन दुर्लभे नात्म मृत्युना गृहापत्याप्त पशुभि का प्रीति साधितैश चलाय it's speaking about wealth uh, wealth is a perpetual source of distress it is most difficult to acquire and it is virtual death for the soul what satisfaction does one gain actually from his wealth similarly how can one gain ultimate or permanent happiness from one so called home children relatives and domestic animals which are all maintained by one's hard earned money so here shil gurudev has mentioned that wealth also just like we have so many false hopes to enjoy in this world by connecting with another jiva and trying to establish happy family life uh this is our hope this is our dream similarly we also approach wealth in the same way we think that if i acquire so much money so much wealth then my happiness is going to increase why because we think that by this money oh we can get the honey this is what <laughs> shila prabhupada actually told in his purport money money sweeter than honey brighter than sunshine, brighter than sunshine. <laughs> so this is the hope and dream of the conditioned soul because he identifies that this money is the root cause of the happiness because by acquiring this money this wealth oh then i can acquire all the necessary paraphernalia all the necessary sense objects in this world I can buy a nice big house. I can get a very beautiful car. I can have a big bank balance that I can draw from for all the the uh, problems and all the responsibilities raising the children, sending them through school and all of this. <clears throat> so there is this expectation that by acquiring so much wealth, then I'm going to be happy. But actually, as it is stated here in this verse, what happens is the opposite. uh because the wealth itself is temporary the wealth also is external to the soul as shimati shamrani did describe so graphically that the soul cannot actually enjoy the objects of this material world and no matter how much wealth one acquires the the soul will still remain dissatisfied we see many many examples there are many uh current examples in modern history of personalities who acquired so much wealth uh and so much fame so much glory big celebrities marilyn monroe and so forth but they could not find happiness by all their fame by all their wealth so the soul cannot be satisfied by any external objects of this world and the point that is being made here is that the wealth itself is temporary and therefore in the end we will be dissatisfied so what to speak of the objects that can be bought and purchased by this wealth but nevertheless everyone is going on with this grand illusion thinking that the more i work hard and the more that i try to acquire wealth uh, then i will be able to get more sense gratification and i will become happy there's another series of verses in shrimad bhagavatam fifth canto which our spiritual master shila ac bhakti vedanta swami prabhupad he used to quote quite often in his preaching the teachings of lord rishab dev to his 100 sons so he used to he used to quote one verse nunam pramattak kurukte vikarma yad indriya pritaya apranoti tatsaramani yata atmano yam asanna pi kleshada ashadeha nunam pramatta kurute vikarma 
They are very pramatta, the conditioned souls. This is describing the nature of the conditioned souls in this world. That they think out of this madness of a desire to enjoy sense gratification, they perform so many vikarmas. Nunam pramatta kurute vikarma. Because of this illusion, this pramatta actually means madness or craziness. So the conditioned soul is in this illusion, this maya, as Gurudev described in the beginning of the class, that the whole material world is this maya, this strong illusion. So because of this pramatta, this craziness, Yad indriya pritaya apranoti. He thinks that simply by enjoying the senses, uh, that this will bring satisfaction. But tatsaduman ye yata atmano yam asanna pi kleshada asha deha. It only ends up bringing him more klesha. Klesha actually means sufferings, because he's accepting this temporary material body, and by performing these. Vikarmas, vikarmas means prohibited activities, uh, trying to gain sense gratification, going to any extremes to acquire this. And the result of that is that again he has to accept another material body. Just like Srila Gurudev told yesterday, that because of attachment in this world, like Bharat Maharaj, he was attached to a, a baby deer. But the attachment between male and female in this world uh, is much stronger than that. So certainly at the time of death, if someone has cultivated this deep attachment within this life, then they will certainly be thinking at the time of death about the persons who, to whom they are attached. And the result is, male will be thinking of the female and become female. And female will be thinking of the male and become male in next life. And in this way, again, asanna piklejada asadeha. Again, he has to accept the miseries of this material body by taking birth again in this world. So all of these teachings being given in the 11th canto here are teaching the method for coming out of this illusion by first of all recognizing that it is illusion. And if we don't recognize this, then again and again we will become snared by this false conception of life, that I am this body uh, and everything belonging to me is actually mine, and by this identification, again, we have to accept another body. Om Gyan Atmanandhasa Gyan Ondana Salakaya Takshur Militam Dena Tasmai Sri Guravi Nama So now, among Navayogendras, Prabhupada Maharaj is giving the conclusion Tasmat Gurum Prabhupada Deta Jigyasu Strayam Uttamam Shabdei Pari Chanishnatam Brahmani Upashama Strayam We have heard how by relationships in this world we cannot be eternally happy. We have heard how by the accumulation of wealth and everything that that brings we cannot be permanently happy. Prabhupada Maharaj also mentioned by performing sacrifices and going to Swarag to the heavenly planets, one will eventually return here. So whichever path we take in life ends up with what? The repeated cycle of birth and death. No happiness or satisfaction, only endless frustration. Tazmat, therefore, therefore because there is no way to success, because there is no other way to happiness, Tazmat, therefore, Gurum Prapadeta. One must submit oneself mm, instead of to <coughs> society, family members, and to one's senses and material desires. One must propagate, submit oneself tasmat gurum propagate at the lotus feet of Sadguru. 
Tas Madhgurum Prapadyeta Jigyasho Sayam Uttamam. And there, at the lotus feet of Guru, one can inquire about Sreya. Sreya means auspiciousness, one's ultimate benefit. What is the ultimate benefit for the Jiva? In this world, the ultimate benefit for the Jiva is Bhagavad Rati, attachment for the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, so therefore, such a person, such as ourselves, it is imperative that we take shelter at the lotus feet of Sadi Guru and inquire, who am I, who is God, how can I attain auspiciousness in my life? Therefore, the first line of this verse describes the qualification of Shishya, the disciple. Hmm? The second line of the verse, Shabdai Paritanishtatam Brahmani Upashamashrayam, describes the qualifications of Sadguru, the bona fide spiritual master. Three qualifications have been given. One is Swarup Laksham. That means the intrinsic characteristic that makes a Vaishnava a Guru. All Vaishnavas actually are Gurus, they're real Vaishnava. What quality? That is the Swarup Laksham that makes Guru Guru heavy, immovable, full of knowledge, more than that, full of praying. Mm -hmm. That is called Swarup Laksham. Other two qualities are called Tatasta Laksham. <coughs> Tatasta Laksham, they are extrinsic characteristics or marginal characteristics. They may be there in those who are not Guru, but they will certainly be there in a person who is Guru. Mm -hmm. So, what are the, what is the Swarup Laksham and the Tatasta Laksham? First, Tatasta Laksham. Brahmani Upasha Masrayam. Mm -hmm. He's detached from this world. The reason is because his heart is completely absorbed in Shri Krishna. So outwardly we can see with the eyes how a person is, has no attachment in this world. Kanaka Kamini Partishta Bhagini Chariyati Saito Vaishnava. Sayana Sakta Say Shuddha Bhakta. Those who have given up all attachment for the sex life, for collection of money, and for the accumulation of reputation, are called Vaishnav. They have conquered the material energy. So first, the Tatasta Lachan, Brahmani Upasham Ashrayam, is detached from this world. Second Tatasta Lachan is Shabde. Shabde Paritanish Natam, Brahmani Upasham Ashrayam. The word Shabde, Srila Jiva Goswami Pad in his Bhakti Sandarbha has given a description. He said, Shab, um, Shabde Brahmani. Veda Tat Pariyena Nishnatam. It means that the Guru is deeply versed in the meanings of Ved Vedanta, Upanishad, Puran, Gita, Bhagavat, everything. All the Shastras. He's deeply versed in that. And because he is convinced of the conclusion of the Shastra, therefore he can convince any conditioned soul in this world who is surrendered at his lotus feet. The living entities in this world have so many doubts. Hmm? But Sangsayatma Vinashati. If someone has doubt in Krishna, in Krishna Nam, Krishna Dham, hmm? then oh, they will lose everything. So how will the doubts be removed? So the, the second, that is the Tatasta Lakshan of Sri Guru, is in so fixed and in deep understanding of Shastra, and he can describe the philosophy of Ved, Vedanta, Upanishad in such a way that all the doubts in the hearts of the conditioned souls will be removed. If we want to know how we can go across Maya, <coughs> and the pain of birth and death, and to have Krishna praying, certainly you will have to go to Gurudev, and that will help Oh, this Sarupa Lakshan and Tata Lakshan, all qualities. We should know all these as that he can remove the doubts of devotees. But this will not do when some realization of Krishna. This is main thing. Then he will tell Gurudev. He is, how he has 
attend Krishna Prem, he will describe himself. His story, like Gop Kumar, told his own history to his disciple. Otherwise, and Tata Selection also, Upasama Shaya, he should not be attached to anyone in this world. No wife, no children, no wealth, no nothing. What about disciples? Disciples must be humble to take all these things. He should be of high class, cool, family, humble. He should walk up in morning before Gurudev and sleep after his taking rest, always serving, obeying, not disobeying him. Thus. Then, <coughs> he had no attachment anywhere, but he is merciful. <laughs> he is only attached to Krishna, because he has no left anything for all these things, only to Radha and Krishna. No time at all. Tatra Bhagavatam Dharman Sikhet Guru Atma Daivata Amaya Nubhatya Jastu Sedh Atma Dohari Jnana Timrandasya Gyalandyana Salakaya Chakshuru Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Guru Venamaha First of all, I offer my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of my Gurudev, who has very mercifully invited me to attain the highest fulfillment. And I also offer my humble obeisances, Dhanabhat Pranam, to all Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis who are present, all the learned and wonderful sannyasi senior Vaishnavas. And I ask them forgiveness for any offense I may have made. I don't speak so often. So I know that sometimes I may disturb or cause any difficulty. Please forgive me. Uh, first announcement. Yeah, Nandakopal Prabhu has announced, has requested me to announce. For Anukut, anyone who <laughs> anyone who wants to cook or prepare anything, they can contact <laughs> Nanda Gopal Prabhu, yourself or Nila Chalavili. There is boga available for those who want to cook. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I am not very qualified, I don't know how to cook, so... Madhav Maharaj yesterday described the qualities of Kanishta Vaishnava, that he, has, he knows how to cook, and I don't even know how to cook. <laughs> so you can imagine my position. Now the sloka comes. Tatra Bhagavatam Dharman Siksat Guru Atma Daivata Amaya Yatta Amaya Ya Anu Vritya Jais Trushyat Atman Atma Dohari. Not my mother language, my Sanskrit. Translation Accepting the bona fide spiritual master as one's life. Accepting the bona fide spiritual master as one's life and soul and the worshipable deity, the disciple should learn from him the process of pure devotional service. 
the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, the soul of all souls, is inclined to give himself to his pure devotees. Therefore, the disciples should learn from the spiritual master to serve the Lord without duplicity and in such a faithful and favorable way that the Supreme Lord, being satisfied, will offer himself to the faithful disciple. This is what most beautiful description of the behavior of a disciple. I pray that one day I may attain this qualification. So here it says, the spiritual master is teaching what? Yeah. Sudha Bhakti, only the process of pure Bhakti. And the disciple who is faithful, who is sincere, he will benefit so much. What is that process? Anabilasita sunyam, jnana karmadi anabritam, anukulyena krishna anusilanam bhaktir uttama. When we have the great good fortune to receive the merciful glance and shelter of the bona fide spiritual master, yeah, many of us come with material attachment, as we have just heard the description, how difficult it is to give up the relationship with the opposite sex, and especially the desire for money. Yeah. Life after life we have been associating with these sense objects. So very, very difficult. Many times we experience how difficult that is. How to overcome that? Only by faithfully, sincerely taking shelter of the lotus feet of the spiritual master. What does that mean? Yeah. That we have full faith. Yeah, but the spiritual master, the bona fide spiritual master, is telling me it is for my ultimate benefit. I should follow that. Not only that, I should pray deep within my heart that my only attachment will be for the lotus feet, the service, the eternal association of that merciful personality who has saved me. Sri yeah. Gurudev just mentioned that the spiritual master is attached only to Krishna, to nothing else, nobody in this world. I once heard also, perhaps this is for the disciple most important, yeah, that attachment for nothing else except for Krishna means, first of all, do we know Krishna? First Krishna appears in front of the disciple, the aspiring disciple, in the form of Ashray Bhagavan, Gurudev. If we have attachment only for Guru and Krishna, Ashray Bhagavan, this will save us from all material calamities. And Gurudev mercifully instructs us in the process of pure bhakti only. This is the bona fide spiritual master. And most fortunate are those who are able to receive the association of that Sudha Vaishnava who is completely immersed in the mood of the internet followers in the line of Srila Rupa Goswami. What will he teach us? Amnaya Praha Tatvam Hari Aha Harim Sarva Saktim Rasabdim. Yeah. Not my mother language. <laughs> what Guru Deva teaches how the supreme <coughs> ultimate goal of us is Hari. Which Hari? Yeah. Who is the son of Brajan and Nandana? Yeah. Who is the reservoir of all pleasure? who is the source of all pure love and affection. Whatever affection we want in this world is a very dim reflection 
of that very affection which freely yeah, Krishna wants to give. And as Gurudev said, Krishna is absorbed. He has no time to worry for us. But mercifully, Gurudev coming to the level of Madhyama Adhikari, he distributes that mercy by his own association, by his instructions. We can attain attachment yeah, to always please that very spiritual master, to always assist him in a menial way, and to, under his guidance, yeah, serve the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There's many things in my heart which I want to share, and uh, I have not, I don't know how much time. When we meet others, don't talk, oh, oh so much suffering, my family has lost, uh, my wife has divorced me, what to do, so many things. Don't discuss. <coughs> like Rup Sanatam, when they used to meet together, what doing? Always talking about Krishna. Prasparanuka. So disciples should learn this. And <coughs> Mitho Rati. He should remind him and he should remind him. Always the very sweet pastimes of Krishna. Always, always. So that Maya cannot enter. Other Maya will come. And how Krishna Prem be achieved, he should learn from his Gurudev. And then, Kvachit Rudanti Achyuta Chintaya, Kvachit Hasanti Nindanti Badanti Alau Kaka, Mityanti Gayantam Anusila Mantajam, Bhavanta Tushnim Paramitya Nibhita. How Gurudev hmm? is always sinking in the ocean of Krishna, Sweet pastimes. Pachit Radhan. Oh. Very Vilakshan city. Vilakshan. Very Vilakshan. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. Like this. Oh. That kind of sadhu or guru, or oh, extraordinary character, huh? way they <coughs> sometimes they begin to think. Oh, up till now I have not taken darshan of Krishna and Radhika. What should I do? Where to go? Oh, crying bitterly. Here and there, where to go? Like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has told something like this. Kaha jau? Vajendra Nandan. Vina Phate So, this is, this should be, we should learn all these things. And then they began to weep. And sometimes, he will remember <coughs> that Krishna is Supreme Lord, but even having so many appellants, he is hiding himself in the council of gopis. And then he becomes 
very happy and he begins to laugh loudly. And sometimes he feels that I have seen Krishna and Radhika. And then he becomes so happy, excessive. And then he begins to sing the glories of Krishna and Radhika. And he becomes to search Krishna and Radhika where they are, where Bhaktivinoda Thakur has written in his, in his song like that. Then <coughs> <coughs> he becomes. And then sometimes he becomes silent. So these are the things that a disciple, pure disciple, should learn from his Guru. This human form is given by Krishna very mercifully because he is causeless merciful. So don't waste your time in this Grihastha Ashram. <coughs> We have told, and Krishna will told, tell himself, this is a blind well, blind well. You have tested this sense gratification in your past course of life. So don't come towards this. So, all the things we should learn from Gurudev and follow his instruction. Go Prima. Hare Krishna. So, oh, what, what, what? Um, you said that the Guru is not attached to the disciple, he's only attached to Krishna. Yes. Another time you said that the Guru loves the disciple. But he's not loves attached. Him. So what's the difference? And loves him. And he has so much affection. But not attached. What is attached? Because he is totally attached to Krishna. He has no his fraction to be attached anywhere else. So what's the but he will be merciful. And he, he, should, he will teach all these things. But not attached. What's the difference between love and attachment then? Oh, there is so much difference. But <laughs> <laughs> Akash and Pada. Like Pada has. <laughs> attachment is. <laughs> lust. Lust means uh, morcha. Rust. 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 And love is pure.
Yes. Yeah. May I please have some specific instructions? Something I can hold on to for my life? Everything I have to. Okay.